Hi everybody, in this video we're going to take a look at the Craig Concealed Hinge Jig, see if it's actually worth the 30 odd pounds asking price. Coming up next. Now, Craig's uh, snappily named KHI Hinge Jig. How do they come up with these names? It's amazing. Um, I think I referred to this briefly in passing when I did my Concealed Hinges video. I've had this for a while and I've only used it a couple of times. I used it a bit more recently for a reason that I'll come to a little bit later on. And I thought I'd just give you a few thoughts on it, uh, see if it's worth your £32 or thereabouts that they cost. Uh, short answer, yes, I think it is actually, with a, with a couple of caveats, and we'll, we'll talk about those a little bit later. Uh, but in brief, what is it? It's a, it's a hinge drilling jig for drilling uh, the hinge pockets for concealed hinges. Uh, kitchen cabinet style hinges, cup hinges, euro style hinges, whatever you call them. Uh, if you're in the business, if you're in the trade, then you, you probably do a few of these uh, because that's part of the part of the nature of the business. And you'll probably have some way of drilling these hinge pockets already. Uh, I do mine with a dedicated drill press. I don't do enough of it to justify the, the fancy version of this made by Blum themselves, which is a, uh, the Blum Eco Drill. That's a couple hundred quid. Uh, I know some very successful carpenters, cabinet makers, who have very nice businesses and they just use a simple template and a router dedicated to, to doing the hinge buckets. Uh, but for everybody else, well, this is probably a, a good solution. If you don't do that many, if you're doing, I think I said in the previous video, more than a couple of these, then this is a worthwhile solution, definitely worth having a, a look at. Uh, and let's go through this in a little bit more detail and see what you get for your money. Let's start by saying what you don't get in the package, actually. Uh, there's no case, no cover, no box, no bag even to keep all the bits together. Uh, all it comes in is a rather sort of nasty little uh, plastic blister pack like this. Uh, but to be honest, the lack of a bag or a box is absolutely fine because once it's assembled, everything fits together very neatly in a single package. There's even space underneath there to store the Allen key. Uh, it's for you to uh, adjust the depth stop. And there are only five pieces to this. There's the body of the jig itself, there's the bit holder or shroud, there's the depth stop, collar and the allen key to adjust it, and there's the bit itself. The bit itself is a nice quality Forstner style bit, it's 35mm wide for standard 35mm cup hinges. Uh, and it is one of those Forstner style bits that will drill a completely flat hole apart from a very small spike in the very center. That spike adds about three millimeters or so uh, to the overall height. So w when you're first setting the depth stop that you want to drill to and then add three millimeters to it, that's usually a pretty good starting point. Uh, as always, better to uh, drill a test hole uh, in some scrap material first before trying this out on your uh, finished workpiece. The drill bit fits into the holder very simply from underneath and the depth stop collar fits around that and simply locks in place with an allen key. The bit holder then fits on a bayonet fitting into the main body of the jig and as I said earlier the allen key has its own little space under there where it can be stored safely. Now in use the jig locates very easily against the edge of the door and there are little cams built into it that lets you change the distance of the hole from the edge of the door. I, I don't particularly like that method of measuring, I prefer to measure to the centre of the hole personally, but I understand why they've done it and they give you a choice of three, four, five and six millimetres as preset stops uh, on the jig. They're very easy to adjust with a screwdriver and there's a little cam around the back that clicks into place quite positively. One slightly strange thing that I did find is that they were very easy to move one way but much stiffer to move back the other and if you do find that that, that happens on your jig it's quite easy just to reach around the back of the jig and just press the little dingus in with a with a fingernail or a small screwdriver while you turn uh, the little cams around to the to the higher settings. I personally found the 6mm setting to be a little bit tight. I prefer to have my hinges in a little bit a little bit further inboard than that uh, but that's just a personal preference of mine. Uh, there are zero marks uh, on the hinge itself and also little notches within the hinge cutout that let you align 
against a pencil mark. The hinge itself, the hinge body is quite deep, so you will need to have those pencil marks go inboard perhaps a little bit further than you, than you might be used to. But once you've got the hang of where they need to be, they're very easy to align. But one thing you must do with these is to clamp the jig down. The jig body underneath is really quite slippery. There's no grippiness there at all, so don't be tempted to try and handhold this in place. You will need to clamp these down, because if you don't, then you run the risk of having uh, an inconsistent result, and the whole point of having a jig like this is to have accurate and consistent holes drilled where you want them to be. Uh, I mentioned earlier on there were a couple of slight caveats with this. One of them is the distance from the edge. I personally to have mine prefer to have mine inboard a little bit further. Uh, the other one I'm going to have to show you really because it's a bit a bit strange, and I don't know if it's just this jig or if it's all of them. Uh, let me let me show you what I mean on a, on a sample door. Okay, so we've got a little jig clamped against our mock door. Uh, we've got it all lined up against the pencil mark, we've drilled out the central cup. What happens, especially with MDF, is that everything gets sort of contained within this sort of shroud thing really. So it's actually quite easy to clear out, although you will need to clear that out, especially with MDF, after every hole you cut. But once that's done, we can fairly easily vacuum that out. But this is where it gets a little bit weird. Um, the two holes here, I can't quite see what they're for. I mean, fairly obviously, they're for you to mark the fixing holes that you can screw the hinge to. But ordinarily, I just put an awl through there, but even a skinny little awl like this one isn't small enough to fit through. What they seem to be expecting you to do is to, unless you've got a second drill, take the main drill out, put a tiny little two mil drill bit in there and drill through there. to mark those screw positions. Now that's that's fine, it's a little bit clunky and it's not the end of the world to have to swap things out like that. And to be honest, a cheap sort of 10.8 volt drill driver dedicated to the skinny drill bit whilst you're doing this kind of thing probably makes a reasonable amount of, of sense. But this is where it all falls down a bit for me because with the jig unclamped, and your hinge popped in there, if you screw that down, it's nowhere near square. So let's try and figure out what's going on here. Um, the, the simple truth seems to be that if you use the jig to drill out the skinny little fixing holes uh, to screw the hinge onto the door, they don't come into the right place, for, for certainly not for these hinges, for the Blum 71B355s or any other of the Blum hinges that I've got here. Uh, what happens is, and again, let's, let's get the elephant in the room out of the way. Uh, no, I am not moving the jig between drilling the main hinge cup and drilling the fixing holes. It's clamped down very firmly, and when you do clamp this down, by the way, you need to, you need to clamp it down quite carefully because it is, as I said before, quite slippy underneath. Uh, and it, is prone to shifting off the line very slightly as you clamp it down. But clamp it down firmly and, and you don't move that, that isn't touched at all. You drill out the main cup hole, take that main sort of shroud and bit out carefully, uh, and then you use the jig to drill the skinny little fixing holes for the screws for the hinge, and they don't line up. Uh, I don't know why that is, it is very peculiar. Again, I've done this so, so, so many times. Uh, and I'm getting the same result. It is uh, the definition of madness. Uh, yes, the door, the samples that I'm using are absolutely square. Yes, you put the hinge into the cup and square the hinge body against your square and the holes just don't line up. They're very slightly off and what happens is because you've got a countersink in the top of the hinge plate, as you screw that down, it pulls the hinge out of true. Um, so overall, a little bit of a strange one, really. I don't understand why those holes aren't big enough to take a stand at all. I don't understand why they don't match the positions on my standard Blum hinges. If you've got one of these jigs and yours works perfectly, let me know in the comments down below, because we'd love to benefit from your experience. Uh, it's actually not a deal breaker for me. I think overall, 
the hinge jig works really well. I'll just carry on uh, fitting my hinge into the hinge cup, squaring it up against the door uh, and drilling the fixing positions out with my uh, self-centering drill bit, as I always have done. Um, and for everything else, well, the hinge jig works really well. It puts the hinge in the right position consistently. As I said, purely as a personal thing, I would prefer to have it, the option to bring the door over so that it was actually in a line uh, with the edge of the cabinet, whereas as it is, it's a millimetre and a half or so uh, out of alignment. But that's just a purely personal preference on my part. But that is kind of it, really. There's not much more to say about this little jig other than to say... Uh, actually, yeah, one other thing to mention is that this is fairly obviously because of the how closely this bit has to fit in the bit holder. That is a proprietary part, and eventually when the bit does need replacing, when it goes blunt, you will have to buy the official Craig version. It's not particularly cheap. About £22 is the cheapest price I've been able to find for it. Uh, so it's just something to bear in mind. I have heard from a couple of people who've had this jig for a couple of years who've said that uh, after a couple of years of typical hobby use in MDF and in softwoods, uh, the, the drill bit is still going strong, so fair enough. Obviously, if you're using it more regularly than that, or if you're using it in hardwoods, then you might have to factor in a replacement bit a little bit sooner. Uh, but that is it, really, uh, for this video. I will certainly be uh, continuing to use this jig because my drill press method is set up largely for 22 mil doors, so it's quite convenient for me to have an 18 mil option. It's also quite convenient for me to be able to take the jig to the door rather than keep taking the door to the drill press. So uh, quite a handy option to have. But that really is it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe for more weekly woodworking and workshop videos. Uh, check out the links down in the video description below to all the good stuff that we've talked about today and for all the different ways in which you can support the channel. And many, many thanks to all of my Patreon supporters who do just that. Remember, there's more good stuff on the blog post on the companion website at 10minuteworkshop.com and you'll also find links to products that we featured there as well as links to the Amazon store. But that's it though for this week, really. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.